Day two and three of Big Bend National Park started at the Maverick Junction entrance. We had beautiful weather all three days that we visited the park. Day two, we drove the 30-mile Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. On the drive, we were able to stop and hike four short trails and enjoy the views from several pull-off areas. Hiking began at the Sam Nail Ranch Trail. Wow, there's the well part. The hole going down to the well. The pipe and everything. And these things just pump the water up for the guy. Look at those mountains. Where are we at, Dardar? We're on the, um, well, we're in Big Bend National Park. What is today? Uh, today is Monday, I think, the 22nd of April. We're on the Maxwell Scenic Drive Road, taking a hike. Ross Maxwell. And this is the Fred Nail. We continued the drive to the Homer Wilson Ranch Overlook. This sheep and goat ranch was established in 1929 and abandoned in 1945. It still looks like an active ranch. We continue to the Burrow Mesa pour off for a one mile hike, which takes you through a dry creek bed to the 100 foot tall vertical channel that is carved into the rock from the water of the mesa above. A pour off is a seasonal waterfall. The white surface of these rocks was formed from millions of years of volcanic events. Our next stop on the scenic highway was the Castellon Historic District, where there's a visitor center and a camp store. On May 22, 2019, a fire in Mexico jumped the Rio Grande and spread rapidly to the buildings that once housed the visitor center and the store. The National Park Service, Adobe experts, historic architects, and structural engineers are working together to determine how much of the structure can be salvaged. This temporary visitor center overlooks the floodplains of the Rio Grande. 
Today there's mesquite trees growing where the land was once farmed. Continuing on, we stopped at the Emory Peak Roadside Overlook. Okay, here we are, Big Bend. Now, right there where my finger is, is Emory Peak. It's a mile higher than we are, and it's 16 miles away. And we go this way, and that is called, right there, is the South Rim. And then back this way is Elephant Peak. <laughs> we noticed if you walked directly across the road, you would have a great view of the Rio Grande. This is a great view of the Santa Elena Canyon, which is where we will do our third hike of the day. The Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive ends at the Santa Elena Canyon. This hike takes you on a very primitive trail to the inside of the canyon along the U.S. side of the Rio Grande. I told them people back there, it was like holding a door at Walmart. I had to get out of the way. Once you start, you can't stop. They just keep coming. <laughs> there are several switchbacks going up the Rock Mountain. Once you reach the upper level, you continue around the mountain and down the other side. The hike then continues along the water of the Rio Grande to finally reach the inside of the canyon. You hear that bird? Uh-uh. This is crazy. You hear it? No. 
Alright, he'll do it again. Uh oh, where'd Dardar -dar go? So Dave, what did we just do? Well, we just went up that canyon. We went over there and walked up some dirt steps. Went through a bunch of switchbacks. Back and forth, straight up. Went through there. And there's a big black rock down there. We went all the way down to that black rock, down to a beach. Down into the big canyon. It was very strenuous. And you had to hold on to the side of the rock because there's no handrails half the place. It's just straight drop off. But, but wasn't it fun? It was well worth it. And Darlene toughed right through it. I'm very proud of her. It was awesome. Awesome. On the trail back, we had visitors. Our friend who works for the DNR told us that these are Adad, barberry sheep. Our fourth and final hike of the day was on the Dorgan Sublet Trail. This one mile hike leads to the ruins of historic farmhouses owned by settlers in the early 1900s. On one side of the hill was the Dorgans and the other side was the sublets. This is all that remains of the sublet home. This would have been the view from their front porch. This was the Dorgan home. The home was built with large windows at the front to take in the view, and a double fireplace that opened into the large central living area.
The fireplace was mostly made of petrified wood. Once again, our buddy Wilson was there to greet us after a long day in the National Park. Day three in the park began early on the very rough seven mile drive down Grapevine Hills Road. That's where you'll find the trailhead for Balanced Rock. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you tell me what trail we're on? We're on the Ballast Rock Trail. Is that Grapevine Hill Road we just came up? Yes. That and is uh, bad. how many days have you been coming to this park? This is our third. Wow. Are you camping alone or are you with someone? I have a husband. Okay. Are you happily married? Very. He wouldn't be here with me if I wasn't. Oh my. This is a great trail. Unfortunately, at the end, you must scramble some rocks to get up to see the balanced rock. I knew I could get up the rocks, but I panicked when I thought there may be snakes in the rocks. I'm extremely afraid of snakes. There would be no place to run if I was to see one. So we didn't get to finish the hike by seeing the balanced rock, but this is a picture of it from the National Park Service. We continued on to the Chisos Mountains, where we stopped at the Chisos Visitor Center. Here I was able to collect my third visitor center stamp for this national park. There's also a lodge at this location in a short, easy window view trail hike. Our final hike in Big Bend was the Chihuahuan Desert Nature Trail, just to take in the views of the desert and all of the cacti that are there.
After finishing this final hike, we did drive to the Rio Grande Village Visitor Center and the Persimmon Gap Visitor Center to try to get my final two stamps for this park, but both visitor centers were closed that day. So now it's time to say our final goodbyes to Wilson because we leave the RV park tomorrow, but I'm sure there'll be other campers pull in our spot and he'll be just as friendly to them. So watch this curve, Dave. Um, you don't have to worry about that. Those yellow signs that come right before sharp turns that they're flashing or anything, those are just suggestions. That's not the speed limit. <laughs> I don't think so. The speed limit are those white signs with the black letters on them. The yellow ones are just a suggestion. My niece, Trish Long, in El Paso looked it up one time on Google and it's just a suggestion so when you come to one of those flashing lights and arrows and says you know 35 miles an hour it's just a suggestion just give her help <laughs>